Hi, it's Hugh Culver, and in this short video, I just want to talk a little bit about this whole idea of speaking from the tip of the iceberg, which this blog is all about. You know, I think you could really stretch this metaphor out a little bit and, and talk about, well, what is sort of the wrong way, you know, to approach uh, your speech development and, and, and how you could end up with a problem on your hands. So, so let's, let's think of the wrong way as sort of like um, attacking a speech like it's a, it's a big boulder. And so here is this big, massive boulder. And uh, it's, it's sitting on the ground, of course. And it's, it, it's developed because, you know, you have put, uh, put your time in and you've actually gone and uh, done your research and so you have all this great content, you know, you have, you have fantastic facts that you have uncovered that you just think are going to really reinforce uh, either the issue that you're there to tackle, or it's going to support the lesson or the model that you want to um, share. You probably have some, uh, you know, perhaps some really great stories. And so these stories... Uh, are it could, it could be client stories, of course. It could be your stories, but these these are stories that are going to really help to introduce the lessons. A really powerful way for you to get people's attention before you, um, you know, supply them with a lesson and then turn that into some kind of, you know, actionable um, takeaway that they can use. So, what else would you have? You'd have facts. You'd have stories. You might have some, you know, statistics that you want to share with them. Uh, you may have some great quotations. Uh, I'm going to separate um, these stories into probably, you know, personal stories. Uh, and, you, and you probably have client stories. Uh, so that's all pretty typical. You're probably going to have some great uh, a framework. And so this uh, framework is, is kind of like, think of it as the sort of the glue that uh, holds the whole message together. And it's this framework that's going to really provide the deliverables in a, in a way. Um, so you have all of this great stuff. I mean, maybe you've even got some videos uh, that you have, you know, uncovered or shot or whatever that you think are just going to be really great for supporting your, your message. So we have all this content and it's in the shape of a boulder. So that's, that's fantastic. The challenge as you do your research to uh, create all of this as you prepare for your client event or your, your public seminar is that you're now looking at, quite literally, you're looking at this large boulder and you're wondering, well, how do I actually deliver it? And so what you start to think is, well, um, you might start thinking, well, first of all, I wonder how much uh, time I have versus the content. So you start thinking in terms of, well, I wonder how I can fit, you know, I've got 60 minutes on the stage or I've got three hours in the workshop or the, the concurrent or the breakout or I've got uh, two days at the retreat. How can I fit all this content into the amount of time that I have? Plus, of course, we want to have breaks. We want to have time for some group discussion or some kind of journaling, fill in the handouts, that sort of stuff. And then what starts to happen is you think, well, of course, I have to support all this content, so I'm going to start to um, design my PowerPoint uh, or my keynote if you're on a Mac, but I'm going to start to design my PowerPoint. Uh, that's going to go along with it. And then, of course, I'm going to uh, design maybe some sort of uh, exercises that are going to support the learning. So I might have some kind of interactive exercise, some dyads, some small group discussions, even as simple as journaling in their workbook or um, sharing what their, their lessons are with somebody else. So now I, I have all of this I'm starting to fit in. Um, and, and if it's a longer event, longer than a keynote, then I'm probably also going to start to wonder, well, you know, when am I going to get all the breaks um, to work in? So rather than thinking about the actual... Uh, deliverables, but even beyond the deliverable, rather than thinking about what is it that they're going to be doing as they walk out, like what's, in other words, the, the perfect ratio of content to relevant deliverables, I'm starting to think, oh my goodness, how do I fit all of this 
into these parameters, which I have to work around, you know, the amount of time I've allotted, or the slides I've got to get through, the exercises, the breaks, and whatever. And so it's sort of a backwards way of thinking, because now what you end up getting, and you've probably experienced this, you end up getting someone who's got 200 slides, and they've got 60 minutes, or they've got you know, five exercises they want to get people to go through and they think they're all, each one of them is fantastic. Um, but then what happens is uh, they start a little bit late and they're completely thrown off and they, now they don't have enough time to fit it all in. Or as they're starting to deliver, they realize that their delivery is actually a little bit longer than they actually anticipated. So now their timing is thrown off. So I want to suggest a completely different way of approaching that. So let's, let's take this right off and let's start again. And let's, let's talk about icebergs. So I know from my trips to Antarctica that an iceberg is kind of an unusual uh, creature, if you will, because icebergs actually have 90% of their content below the surface of the water. And so even though the iceberg may be massive, when we see it actually above the water, there's actually um, a lot more below the surface of the water. So there's about 10% that is actually floating at the top. So let's start looking at, well, how is it that relates to developing a speech or, or a seminar? Well, when you're actually doing your research and you are putting together all those facts and all those statistics uh, and all those quotations and all those stories, and uh, I suppose all those, you know, the exercises that you want to have people go through, that's all fantastic research. That's now all on your mind. It's all in your preparatory notes. But what actually gets covered in the actual presentation is maybe 10% of what you actually know and have thought about and have reviewed. Now, why would you want to do that? Why wouldn't you want to give them everything? Well, your job is not really to give them everything. That's not what you're hired for. That would be like a university professor standing up in front of you and telling you everything they know about molecular biology. It's not going to help you. It's too much information. What they need to know is they need to know a couple of things. They need to know that you understand their problem. And they need to know in no uncertain terms that you understand their pain, their problem, and what they're up against. You need to also explain to them that you've been there. So you need to explain your story. You need to make sure that they understand that you are relevant. And then you need to move into describing something that is going to be a solution that they actually value and that they will actually use. You don't need to give them all of this stuff that you have discovered that's fantastic and it all interrelates. You need to decide how am I going to get through these three major steps in such a way that I am actually entertaining and I'm educating and I'm motivating them so they can move forward. Now, as you're delivering that, you're going to be reminded of this fantastic quotation. And so you're going to pull that quotation up and you're going to use it. So let's say, for example, you want to talk about good old communication. So it's one of the topics that people always value. They always struggle with it. And um, event planners and clients are always looking for ways to teach it in a better way. That's great. That's what you're there for. That's your deliverables is to help people um, with their communication, whatever, whether they're leaders or they are frontline workers. And so, okay, great. So you describe to them that you understand their pain. So you know all the problems around confusion and uh, assumptions and all the problems around client service and all the problems around conflict in the workplace. You understand all that. So you share that with them. And as you're sharing it, you think, you think to yourself, you know, it reminds me of a quick little story I want to share with you. And in that moment, it's fresh. In that moment, you are 
pulling from below the surface of the iceberg and you are pulling a little gem out that you think to yourself, this is a perfect time for it. Of course, you've got your story that you've already planned. But if you can add on a little anecdote at the end that is fresh and is really uh, relevant in that moment, that is brilliant delivery. People love that. They love it when the speaker looks to the ceiling and says, you know, it reminds me of story. Because at that moment, we know this is not canned. At that moment, we know that that person is working hard. So then you get on to your story and you start telling them all about, you know, why is it that I am relevant? Why is it that I am up here? Like, what is it I've discovered? What is it I've researched? Or what have I been through? And as you're doing that, you're reminded of a quotation. So you share a little quotation about, you know, from, from somebody that's all about, you know, communication. That's fantastic. Then you get into the solution. And now you're starting to deliver your solution. And you're saying that there's these three ways that we can enhance our communication. And as you're delivering it, you know, you think of one little thing here. And then maybe on the third point, you think of something else. And so the whole idea is that you're actually doing a dance is what I think of it as. It's, and this dance is where you have, let's say you have, think of it like a vessel. And you have, oh, let's suppose that you have like 60 minutes that you're going to use up. But what you actually came prepared with is you came prepared with about 45 minutes worth of content, maybe 50 minutes worth of content. And you knew that that content was going to take up about 50 minutes. And that you, if you think of it chronologically, that that content starts with the problem, the story, the solution, etc. And you know that you've got this wonderful space right here, which can be used here and here and here as you need it. And as you progress, you're pulling from this extra 10 minutes of your research, all of this content, and you're putting in little anecdotes. That's a brilliant way to deliver. That's what will make you look resourceful. That's what's going to tell the event planner or the client that you have a lot more that you could be delivering and that, that you are a real resource as opposed to being simply resourceful. You are something who is resourceful. You actually have lots of resources as opposed to showing up with a whole bag of tricks that you have to get through um, from start to finish. Okay, so there you go. In this blog posting, I talk a lot about how to actually get to that point and how to avoid the whole problem, uh, in what I, which happens in a lot of presentations, which is where people start slow, finish fast. And this is a real problem that happens because of poor planning and frankly, but usually because of too much content. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Read the blog. It's going to make a lot more sense when you combine the two of these together. And uh, yeah, I just thought it'd be really fun to share this as a visual. And so I hope that that helps to really grab you and get you to think about the next presentation. And how is it that you can really, really dial in on a fantastic presentation from the tip of the iceberg, but have a lot more in reserve that you can drill down and, and dig into as it comes to you. Um, it's a bit of a dance, but when you get the knack of that dance, boy, it's, it's just masterful on stage. Okay, so until we talk again, be your best, see the best in others, and hey, make it happen.